Because I just got to ask, what, what does it feel to be such a remorseless bastard? I mean, you know, it's just another Tuesday for me. What day is it today? <laughs> uh, you know, lately that's kind of my gig, is being a remorseless bastard. But, uh, you know, with this movie, uh, this is kind of my foray. Well, I, I've done it before, but it, it was a... It was definitely a challenging role at, at the time, especially. Um, and he is a remorseless bastard. And you know, I can say a lot of other things about him as well. But I think that's a that's a good little sum up. Um, it was interesting because you know I had done some research after I met with Honas and kind of agreed to do the movie. I, you know, initially it was just uh, it was a chance to be a bad guy, certainly, and and but it was such this cat and mouse sort of thriller. Uh, that I, I, I was attracted to that aspect of it. This was, you know, we filmed this movie like three or four years ago. This is no, you know, this is a little bit ago. When we premiered two years ago at Toronto and and then because of kind of what's happened, mm -hmm. <sighs> uh, you know, they held the film back for very specific reasons and and here we are, you know with the election in November and the movie's coming out, which I think is very timely and very smart on some very apropos. part. Yes, very apropos, yeah. Well, I mean, you say that, you know, maybe that's your gig of recently, but I mean, if you look at maybe your most famous characters or people who have a little moral ambiguity, yeah, well, then you can yeah. always get the, you can see the empathetic side of it. Sure. Um, you know, what, is this something where it's actually harder to play somebody who's a little more, maybe say, one-dimensional? Well, I gotta tell you that the, on initial reading, there were some other scenes that, that we shot that didn't make the final cut, and some additional scenes that Honas and I were writing while we were shooting that gave some backstory to mm -hmm. Sam. Um, and then in seeing a rough cut, we agreed that it wasn't needed. I think that Sam became a much more powerful, visceral character without explaining why he was this guy. You know, the sad thing is, I think there's guys like this out there, you know, roaming that border and thinking that they're doing some great justice for America when in fact they're crazy psychopaths. And, and I think that it said more about this character not explaining himself or his reasons. Um, you know, uh, and though we shot scenes, I think they, they helped me in a way in working with Hanas and making these scenes kind of go, hearing kind of Sam's backstory and stuff, but I think that they would have hurt the film and kind of the mm -hmm. impact that the film would have, but they helped me a great deal, I think, in kind of getting to those places which were so kind of out there, but I think it's better for the movie, I, I know it is, because I saw the rough cut of it, of him not talking and having the audience going, what the hell, yeah. is he just this crazy or did something happen to him? And, and really, it was a snap. It was a psychotic snap that I think he has. Um, although now, as an audience, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you know, because this is what you see and this is what you get. But I, I think in history of film, there are plenty of films themselves and characters that I think get misconstrued over the years. I'll use Gordon Gecko as an example, maybe, mm -hmm. where he sort of became a hero to some people somehow. Yeah. Are you all, I mean, I'm sure there are people already now who have posters of you on the wall, the, the bat, you know, with the, sure. the barbed wire, but are you afraid that maybe there's somebody like in Deep South that's all of a sudden going to have a poster of you, oh, with a tra nice. tracker next to you? And no doubt about it. Um, it's funny, I just saw the other day uh, a trailer. I mean, there's been two trailers. You know, we see these trailers, and then we did a trailer for uh, foreign audiences. Might have been, might have been when it premiered in Mexico, and it's Donald Trump's... Mm speech about, you know, all Mexican immigrants are rapists and thieves and murdering people and and uh, that was, that that speech is over the trailer and it was extremely powerful and I just saw one the other day that's the trailer that you've probably seen, only over it there are tweets from Americans saying this guy's a hero. Um, we need more of these guys, build that wall, build that wall, build that wall. I mean, <sighs> you know, at some, there's been a few points in my life when I am speechless. One is happening right now. It's like this 
It's like when the guy sang on American Idol about his pants on the ground. Do you remember that? <laughs> it, was, it was horrible, but he kept getting voted through because the audience thought yeah. it was amused by it. It's like that's happened here with this election. It started off as a goof, and it's gone too far. And now we're in it into a place that is, frankly, scaring the crap out of me. Um, and I think that, you know, this movie's capitalizing on kind of that fervor, and it should, because maybe this movie will help people, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I think if you're going to vote that way, then you're going to vote that way. Um, but, but maybe it can start a conversation of people walking in a theater and having some semblance of a, of a realistic conversation about why people are trying to get over to America. It's not necessarily not criminals at all. It, yeah. It's people that want to do better for themselves and their family. Want to get away from other criminals. And get away from criminals. But, you know, it, it, it's it's a sad deal. It's a sad deal all the way around, I think. Um, but it's, you know, it, it, what, what went from being this kind of just a neat kind of movie, a thrill ride to see as a viewer has become a hot button topic now, yeah. politically, which, you know, I didn't foresee happening. Uh, I don't think anybody did. And if Honas says he did, he's lying. <laughs> check, check in a second. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe he saw something. I mean, obviously it was an issue that touched close to him and he wrote this script, but, but I mean, I, it, the stage that now we're releasing on is is something that I never ever would have foreseen, and I don't think anybody involved with the film could have. It's a strange time all around. It's a I mean, strange time. Brexit, Brexit and Colombia deciding not to sign a peace treaty with you know made everything better. It's just it's crazy. and then our election, yeah. And our election, it's crazy. It's uh, crazy, it yeah, really is. But it really is. you know, that being said, you know, uh, I think it's a scary, fun movie. Uh, <laughs> you know, you, even you take the polit politics out of it, um, you know, I think it's a real interesting character study of two polar opposites um, and, and a battle of survival and, and matching wits. It, it really does remind me, and this is a conversation that I had that I'll always remember in my initial meeting with Honas, and it reminded me so much of Spielberg's duel. Mm -hmm. um, only a better character study it wasn't just the Trump, but it was really that kind of a, that, it reminded me of that for some reason. and then. You know the opportunity to work with Gal and and Honas and Alfonso and being out there in the middle of nowhere shooting it was it's a hell of an experience, man. Climbing over a bunch of rocks as well. Right? It's climbing over a bunch of rocks with with no uh, no mats or anything to break your fall if you went. And I remember thinking a couple of times, ooh, I'm probably gonna die today. You know, it was literally like crazy time. I I, I don't know what we were thinking, but it was all about trying to make this movie as cool as possible. And so we did some crazy stuff that under normal circumstances, no studio in the world would have allowed us to do any of that. Um, and we were, you know, hundreds of miles from any hospital. So it, it was <laughs> knock on wood that nobody got hurt. We were, I think we escaped that. When I was finished filming, I remember going home just going, that was insane. What were we thinking? But, you know, we were so caught up into it then. To end it on a lighter note. Yeah. Your co-star technically throughout the film is a dog. Oh, God, yeah. Is that, I mean, do you have to, like, be careful not to do certain things because I have to stay trained in a certain way, or do you get to bond with it yourself? No, uh, there was no bonding with this dog. It was three dogs. Okay. Uh, there was one that was supposed to be the, the one that was cool, that you could kind of pet and hang out with, and the other two just wanted to kill everything, <laughs> including me. Uh, and somehow... There was a mix-up one day with what dog was with me in the cab of the truck. And it was sort of like, you know, I think I was taking a swig of my whiskey and I reached over and was like, good boy, tracker. And this dog turned on me and snapped. I felt his teeth brush and it brushed my face, like brushed my beard. I mean, his teeth, I could feel, and it was so fast, so vicious and just a clamp and I remember I remember not moving for that. I could see out of the corner of my eye, the DP and Honas, and they were pale as ghosts. Um, and I slowly touched the door and got out of the truck and fell to my knees, because it's the closest I think I've been to certain death, or if not for sure maimed forever, because, mm -hmm. uh, man. But those dogs and seeing the final product, that's like the new Jaws. I mean, that yeah. dog is scary as all 
Get out. Just watching them go up those rocks. I can't believe they even let dogs do that. It was insane. It was insane watching the dog climb those rocks. I mean, by the way, I did, as the filming went on, I, I did kind of bond with the dogs. Although the trainers were very specific not to get too close to them in any way. Yeah. Um, but just kind of due to time and spending time with the dog, it ended up kind of liking me. I don't know if it was the one that almost wasted me that I ended up liking the most or one of the other ones, but one of them in particular, we became kind of buddies and it was okay, but the dog is amazing. The dog is uh, so scary in this movie that it's unbelievable throwing himself at, at, through any, you know, there's a glass piece of glass there for the door or the, the car door window glass. The dog just heaves itself. I mean, it was like killing itself making this movement. Wow. I don't think it got paid very well either, by the way. You know, a couple dog treats. Um, look at the recognition. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's what he really wanted. But the, the dog yeah. trainers were amazing. It, it was an amazing, that whole thing, because I've worked with animals before that were a big pain in the butt, and this dog, or those three dogs, the combination of, were awesome. There wasn't one take where, like, well, we can't use that because the dog didn't do what it was supposed to. Every time that dog was hitting his mark and trying to kill something, it was awesome. Perfect. Thank you so much for your yeah. time. I really appreciate Absolutely, it. Absolutely, man.